Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at your news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city council has passed several new ordinances which raise the age limit to purchase cigarettes, tobacco, and nicotine or vapor products to the age of 21. The new ordinance also bans the use of vapor products indoors in public places and places of employment. And the reason for that is that the brain does not fully develop in regards to really the ability and resistance to nicotine addiction. And you can still become addicted after 21, but you're particularly vulnerable before 21. So we're trying to help make sure that people don't end up with a lifetime addiction that they're having to fight. Um, on average, somebody who becomes addicted to tobacco is going to die 13, 14 years earlier than those that didn't, so it's, uh, it has a big impact. It also can affect others, non-smokers that are exposed to other people's smoke. The other thing is we're also closing the loophole around the e-cigarettes, quote unquote, or vapor kinds of products. Um, uh, one, people put other things in those devices, uh, plus we know that people that are around people that are smoking those or using those vapor devices actually pick up quite a bit of nicotine in their own body or other chemicals that may be present in those uh, vaping devices. So it's to protect the public from both of those exposures. The new age limit went into effect November 19th and the ban on indoor use of vapor products goes into effect January 19th. Construction has started on the new KCPD North Patrol Station. The new 25,000 square foot station is located at 10610 Northwest Prairie View Road and it will replace the current station, often known as the Bumblebee Station on Barry Road. Funding for the new station comes from the public safety quarter cent sales tax that was renewed by voters in 2010 for capital improvements. Construction continues through next fall. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place for your family at City Facilities during this winter season. Mark your calendar for the annual 2016 Mid-America RV Show, coming to Bartle Hall January 14th through the 17th. The Mid-America RV Show is the largest consumer show dedicated to the RVing lifestyle and everything associated with it. RVing enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market. Whether you are on the market for a motorhome, custom motor coach, or pop-up camper, you will find it at the Mid-America RV Show. For additional information, go to gsevents.com. Your outdoor adventure continues with four days of boating and outdoor fun at the Kansas City Boat and Sports Show from January 21st through January 24th. Whether you're an avid outdoorsman or just looking for a way to escape winter for the day, this is your show. This annual four-day event turns Bartle Hall into a one-stop marketplace for outdoor fun with activities for all ages. For additional information, go to KansasCitySportsShow.com. Fans can celebrate baseball in a big league way at the Royals Fan Fest at Kansas City Convention Center's Bartle Hall. Meet your favorite World Series team at the autograph sessions featuring current and former Royals. Enjoy the interactive games for fans of all ages, main stage programs, and more. The club's 2015 Major League Award winners will also be recognized during the event. A portion of the proceeds will again benefit Royal Charities. For additional information, go to royals.com slash fanfest. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000.
I'm Trina Parker with the Public Works Department. Every week, you drag your trash and recycling to the curb, and when you get home, it's gone. Today, we're talking trash with the Solid Waste Division crews to find out what happens when your trash bags leave the curb. It's a typical morning. You set it out, solid waste crews pick it up, and throw it in the truck. Generally, you know, in terms of processes, you know, everyone places their bag and trash out to the curb. Um, we like to try and keep that social promises. If you put your trash out by, you know, 7 o'clock the day of collection, we'll pick it up um, by the time you get home. The trash bag's journey continues even after it's compacted in the truck. Once the truck is full, the crew heads to one of the city's designated landfills. Solid Waste Division Manager Michael Shaw explains the process. So what happens is the truck will actually just dump it out onto the ground, what we call this, the, the face of the landfill. Um, it's, it's merely just a hole that's been dug in the ground that gets uh, dirt put over top of it on a daily basis. So the landfill operator will take you know, a very large bulldozer type truck um, and kind of compact the trash down. We do that in order to maximize the amount of space in the landfill. Now back to the maintenance workers you see every week picking up your trash. Every day they walk between seven to nine miles, lifting about 14,000 pounds a day. They start around 6 a.m. to get prepared and work through rain, sleet, or snow. It's a very long day for your typical maintenance worker, and it's not always the safest job. Citizens may unknowingly be putting the workers at risk. Solid Waste Supervisor Donald Finley explains. Well, a lot of times, uh, people, they put needles in the bags, and the guys can get stuck by needles or glass, they get cut, uh, they get bleach in their eye, you know, those sort of things. So that would be very helpful if they, you know, would be more aware of what they're putting in their trash. It's not just what you put in the trash. Citizens behind the wheel can also be a hazard to the crews. And you know there is a proper way to pass. Uh, you just toot your horn, let the guys know that you are back there and you're coming around. And they will just kind of lean to the side and let you on by. These maintenance workers want to make it home safely and you can help by paying attention to them while you're driving and watching what you put in your trash. Here are a few more tips. Put your two bags out together, try to keep the bags neat and clean, and don't forget Use sturdy bags if you got you know large bags. Make sure they're sturdy um, so that they, they don't break when they're being lifted. And what's up with the two bag trash limit? It encourages recycling. If you have extra trash greater than two bags of trash and you go buy a trash tag at a local price shop or a Westlake hardware store. Um, the intent of that is, is to reduce the amount of waste we send to the landfill. Citizens needing to use more than one trash bag have to buy a trash tag at their local store, which costs about $2.50 a bag. You know, landfill space is not infinite, I mean, meaning uh, it will at some point be full and can't be used again. Here in the metro, we had four landfills. One closed four years early, and one is scheduled to close soon. Then we'll only have two to use. So preserving our landfill space is going to be very important for Kansas Cityans uh, to ensure that we can have uh, cost-effective services uh, for years to come. Don't forget, recycling is unlimited. We'll talk more about KC Recycles next time. Until then, I'm Katrina Parker with the Kansas City, Missouri Public Works Department. Hi, this is Special Investigator Aaron Dawkins with Animal Health and Public Safety for the City of Kansas City, Missouri. And I'm just here because I want to offer you a few safety tips to keep your animals safe during the winter season. If your animal stays outdoors, we would recommend having a, a properly insulated house for your animals outdoors. If the temperature gets below freezing, if it's cold enough to where a human don't want to be outdoors, chances are you should not have your animal outside in that weather. We care about the safety of the animals. We would hate for an uh, animal owner to lose their animal due to extreme cold. When you take your animal for a walk, make sure that you wipe your animal's paws off uh, once you take them back home as the salt 
or ice melt that is used to melt snow has chemicals in there that can affect your animal if it's uh, ingested. Another safety tip to remember is to make sure that your animal is wearing its city license at all times as animals have a more difficult time finding their way home when they get lost during the winter season. For additional safety tips, uh, feel free to get in touch with the 311 call center where they will be more than happy to answer any additional questions that you may have uh, for keeping your animals safe during the winter season. The Missouri Department of Conservation encourages you to discover nature and learn more about trumpeter swans. The largest waterfowl species in North America, trumpeters are big, beautiful, bright white birds with a black bill and a wingspan of nearly eight feet. They get their name from the trumpet-like call they make. Trumpeter swans were once fairly common in much of North America, but habitat destruction and unregulated market hunting in the 1800s destroyed most flocks in the lower 48 states. Protections and restoration efforts have helped populations bounce back. Trumpeter swans are protected by federal and state laws. Waterfowl hunters need to be careful. Shooting a protected trumpeter swan can cost thousands of dollars in fines. Easily accessible water at city lakes or conservation areas such as Eagle Bluffs in Boone County help by providing winter havens for the trumpeters and places for wildlife watchers to enjoy them. Five, four, three, two, one. Go get them. You can do it.
Setting up your Christmas tree is always a highlight of the holiday season, and disposing of your tree doesn't have to be a chore. Natural Christmas trees can be recycled at the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers. Go to 11660 North Main Street, 1815 North Shoto Traffic Way, or 10301 Raytown Road. The North Shoto Traffic Way and North Main Street sites are open Mondays through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The Raytown Road site is open on Saturdays only. Be sure to take off all the lights, tinsel, and other decorations. There is a $5 tree recycling fee from Mondays through Fridays. Tree recycling is free for Kansas City residents on Saturdays only, and do bring your proof of residency. If you have Christmas lights that no longer work, you can recycle them at locations throughout the city, including Walmart. For a complete list of locations which will accept lights, visit southeasternenterprises.org. Please be aware that for the Christmas and New Year's holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Friday, December 25th and Friday, January 1st. Curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day for residents whose normal trash pickup day is on that Friday. Their trash will be picked up on Saturday during each of those weeks. Monday through Thursday collection will not be affected. Also, the week following Christmas is a trash amnesty period. During this week, residents may set out more than two bags of trash without having to buy those extra trash bag tags. No hazardous waste, bulky items, or leaf and brush will be collected at that time. And remember, gift wrap goes in the trash, not the recycling bin. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. And keep in mind, here at City Communications, we want to thank you for watching Channel 2 all year long. We hope you have a great holiday season and a happy new year. Please enjoy this video montage we've put together of all the great events we've been covering during the past year. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great new year. I'm representing Got it? Tech 9? Let's go! And you might see our new street sweeper that we have co-branded with the Royals and we're pretty excited about it. Awesome. We love this machine because this, what this really proves is that the Royals know how to sweep teams. We know how to sweep streets. Kansas City does have an amazing amount of talent here and letting the nation know that we are uh, a tech force to be reckoned with. I want to I want to take a moment and ask you if you would please just look around and take it all in. All right, I mean seriously, look at this. We got cranes and stuff in the air down here. Okay, uh, that's something special is happening in this city tonight. Mayor Sly James and City Manager Troy Schulte unveiled the city's 2014 through 15 citizen satisfaction survey results during its salute to services last week. This city is uh, driven by the smart use of city data and citizen feedback. That's why this citizen survey is so important to us. Why can't City Hall data be seen as art? I've been drawing and painting my whole life and now this art of data is like just a wonderful opportunity. Well, this is something no other city has ever done before. My job as an analyst has an artistic aspect to it. You will experience engagement with your city government in a completely new way. What would, what would the average person, how would they really like to see this chart? And I'm thrilled today to tell you and to be here to announce Kansas City's own Major League Baseball Urban Youth Academy at Parade Park. 
do. I am. Uh, Today we're celebrating and announcing that through a public-private partnership, we're ready to move forward on an 800-room Hyatt Hotel Convention Center hotel uh, right across the street. And I'm telling you. Well, again, I can't uh, echo enough. Uh, thank everybody enough for their perseverance on this. And I want to want to thank this young lady right here, Mrs. Powell. About six years ago, uh, she came out and she said, "I want to take you out on a tour." And we're going to go look at all the grocery stores. And we spent about an afternoon just driving around. And that's why today, on behalf of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, I'm proud to announce that we're awarding a $30 million grant to bring your vision to life. In grade school, we learned red means stop and green means go. But what goes into maintaining 600 traffic signals every year? Come on, let's go. Take a look at how the city brings it all together. Hey, I want to let you know something. Kansas City, Missouri employees are up to the challenge and we're going to kick some corporate butt.